This is eHobbyist Blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. During this video, we'll suspend further work on the breadboarding function and its corresponding uncommitted components and start work on the power supply, the AC power entry module. Using a power entry module, you have a socket screwed into the enclosure. You plug a cable into that socket. Now it becomes very easy to determine whether an enclosure is connected to power or not. The power entry module I'm using has a standard three-pronged plug as receptacle and underneath a compartment for a fuse. That fuse compartment slides out and you have provision for the main fuse clip and for a spare fuse. My normal course of action is to construct a panel diagram, diagramming the power entry module. In this case, the diagram also contains center marks, not only for the mounting screws for the module, but also center marks for shaft of a square punch, which I'll be using for the first time to cut out power entry module. So I have diagrammed the center punch marks for the square punch as well. I've also included in this diagram a 5-inch line of precisely 5 inches, as accurate as a CAD program Visio can draw it. And from time to time, I do this to double-check the alignment of the printer. This 5 inches should be right on. Next order of business is to clamp the enclosure down. Since I'm working on the back panel, I need it clamped down. And next, having printed off that part of the panel diagram I'm interested in. I'm going to tape it to the enclosure back panel and use it as a template for scribing cutouts and uh, center holes. I now take an automatic center punch and I punch it holes for the center of the shafts of the square punch. I'm going to use two of them on opposing diagonal corners and marks for the mounting holes. I also uh, need to scratch out the edges of the power entry module and also the edges of the square punch need to be clearly marked. Now the square punch is three quarters of an inch on a side and aligning these things is, is kind of critical otherwise you're going to get some lopsided cutouts using a hobby knife to, to make scratches into the metal. Probably a better idea would be uh, to use a scribe tool. Removing a template, we can now get down to the business of drilling holes. We'll select a, a smaller size that I'm going to be using. This would be for, uh, for a number six body size bit, and we'll just use that size. get some, some eye protection on here before I do something nasty to myself. Wet down the drill bit with some cutting oil. Now we're going to drill the centers of the, the holes for the square punch shaft. Now 
This is the square punch. It consists of a drive nut with an associated washer, the square punch itself, which is used to cut the square hole, uh, the die holder or anvil, and then the shaft. I've established the size of this, the square punch shaft as being just a little bit under half an inch, and my universal bit is uh, maximum half an inch. The hole drilled for the shaft should be a little bit bigger than the shaft itself to give some wiggle room to align the square. Smoking. Yeah. Smoke is not terribly good, but what can I do? And so on the underside, I have the, the counter nut and the shaft and the die holder as one piece and the die. The top side is the square punch itself, the washer, and the drive nut. Now I've got to align this square punch, and alignment is critical. Uh, it should be aligned to the marks. I'm also checking for uh, squareness uh, versus the sides of the enclosure. On the bottom, I've got a socket wrench locked in position. On the top, I'm using an open-ended wrench. And we're just tightening down, driving uh, the punch through the metal into the die. And now we're going to cut the second square. I didn't want to, to do anything but two diagonal edges of the square. This is the first time I'm using this square punch. And I'm, I'm having a little trouble because if you look at the edges of the square, I'm off uh, maybe by 50 mils. And that's, it's, it's, it's an issue of positioning. I can't position exactly on the mark. I'm going to have to make it a little shorter the mark the next time I use the square punch. But it does seem to be quicker, faster, cleaner than cutting a round hole and shaping it with some files. Now that I've got, I hope, two squares, let's just see what I have. Yes, indeed, two squares, and I'm going to finish off the cut with a keyhole saw. And again, it's a little bit off the mark by about the thickness of the keyhole saw. Not much, it's just annoying. I tried to get it closely lined. And now the flat file. This hole is big enough to insert the uh, full length 12 inch flat file. And we're just using this to dress up the sides a bit. The top side needs to be filed off a bit. I can still see the scratch marks and I shouldn't be able to see it. But I don't want to go too much over it either. Okay, time marches on. And then I've got a rectangle, more or less, with sides that are flat enough to uh, suit me <laughs> at this time. I check for the fit, and it fits, lo and behold. All right, I'm going to drill the mounting holes for the inlet port. And what disturbs me is that these holes are different distances from the edge of the square. So I'm just going to drill one out and then see how this fits. And then maybe use a counterpunch for a second time to redo the center for the second. Get it positioned a bit more 
consistent with reality. There's the second hole. And now we've got to do some deburring. And once again, I'm too lazy to get a better tool out, so I'm using a large Phillips head. both sides. That's a pretty, pretty clean rectangle, I think. Doesn't look too bad. And now we're mounting AC power entry in inlet. Tighten up on these nuts. And it is hereby installed. Put a cable into it. The cable fits. Three prong plug on the other side of the cable. And now we go for testing. Regardless of uh, what I do, after it's installed, I want to test it. And that's the first test. There'll be others along the way. Okay, I want to check to make sure that I have continuity, proper continuity. Here's uh, testing the continuity of the ground wire. First, the testing the continuity of the continuity tester. Neutral ground, ground wire has continuity and there's nothing else connected to it. Now we're going to do the hot wire. And there's no continuity with anything on the hot wire except that bar which is connected to the fuse. And then finally, test the continuity of the neutral wire, and I have proper continuity and that with nothing else. Now I'm going to be installing a fuse. This is the working fuse. goes into the clip. And here's the spare fuse into the spare fuse compartment. The whole thing gets inserted into the power entry module. And now I need to do a final test on the continuity. I do have continuity with the hot wire. In this video, I started work on the prototyping system's power supply. I demonstrated an AC power entry module, taped a template for it to the back panel of the enclosure, and center-punched holes and scribed cutouts. I drilled requisite holes and used a square punch and keyhole saw to shape a rectangle for the entry module and used a flat file to finish off the cut. After installing the AC power entry module, I tested the continuity between an AC plug and the corresponding tabs on the module with and without an installed fuse. In the next video, we'll continue work on the AC power component. If you like this video, and the idea of the channel, click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until the next time, good day.